I want to express my sincerest gratitude to Iona Thompson and the Arizona Center for Medieval and Renaissance Studies for their ongoing support in curating the necessary intellectual collective we call Race Before Race. My little contribution to this discussion is entitled, You Still Have Work to Do, Vignettes of Black Grief. I've been struggling lately. I've been exhausted, weary from navigating the structures of whiteness, even now in a world driven to universal dismay by a global health crisis, disoriented in a world where I too can be killed in the street, assaulted in the park, or shot dead in my home while sitting, writing about Shakespeare. It's easy to lament and protest the injustices in and out of the academy and to believe that pre-modern studies is getting better, doing more than most, but I must pause while you celebrate yourself and ask, is that true? For whom is that true? Listen to any of us and you might hear a different story. In quarantine, I've asked myself how as BIPOC scholars, can we care for ourselves? How can we care for one another as we struggle together, grieve together, and express our rage together in the streets, on social media, and remotely hoping for a better tomorrow? As we move into a new phase of academic and institutional life, I think about those of us who risk deep personal loss while spending an inordinate amount of time trying to make white people, white colleagues, editors, students, administrators feel comfortable. I grieve with those of us who suffer in silence being the quote only or the quote first of a few in our departments and are reassured with the smile that all scholars matter while bearing a psychological and emotional weight we were never meant to carry alone. I raise up those pre-modern BIPOC scholars who have long invested work in the field and even now are silenced and erased while white progressive scholars who tell me they were proud to vote for Obama sit back and publish those ideas to great acclaim. Where will you be while we self-consciously police our emotions, tone, and attire in the classroom, telling ourselves that we too are scholars phenomenally, but not too much, lest we provoke the ire of racism, ableism, and misogyny expressed so often in student evals. While we may defy all odds to earn the PhD, the job, the book, tenure, we aren't immune to being harassed in the library, profiled and arrested by campus police and routinely confused for hotel staff at our beloved conferences. I fear real heart trouble, given the number of times my own heartbeat has skipped or raced from what you think is the mundane act of passing through the censors at the library, expecting to be publicly humiliated or chained over a $40 book that I must have stolen. I must be a perfectionist, stressing over every dotted I, comma, and crossed, crossed T just to prove that I am worth playing the role of token for a department that believes year after year that there aren't any more qualified Black scholars on the job market who would make a good fit. We are told that the only way to expect change is to work within this slow moving institutional system. And yet with each new reform comes a new iteration of oppression. In other words, we get invited to sit at a table that's already and irreparably broken. And you don't want us to fix it, only maintain it. Which would mean choosing between tending to my own mental health and catering to your passivity. Fixing it, however, would mean tearing it apart from the very fibers. Fixing it would mean deconstructing the very essence of what makes it a table in the first place. Because tables are only diverse, inclusive, and equitable up to a point. Fixing what you broke might just mean moving beyond reform in our fields and toward an abolitionist ethic, i.e. the courage to imagine and create something new. So 
I have just one question to leave us with, or rather to commence with. After all is said and done, we've overcome the Rona, you've marched in the streets, you've made a hashtag appearing to say her name, you've read your Kendi and D'Angelo, done your diversity workshop, put out that institutional statement. But when you've seen me, and when you've sincerely heard me, and you sit with my grief, what will you do with yours? To put it in another way, after you've moved through your own stages to quote unquote, get woke and accept the fact of your own grief, the question remains, what then? Or rather, what now? Thank you.